We are the Falco family. Brian, Serena, Cameron, Kendall, and Savannah. A family of filmmakers exploring the truth about education. Learning to document our adventures in homeschool and life and tell stories of how we live and what we learn. Welcome back or welcome to our channel. I'm Serena and this is the Falco family where we make videos about education and lifestyle. Today I have another book haul for you guys. Let us know if you have any of these on your shelves, anything you have read, anything you have been eyeing. Just let us know in the comment section below. Um, the Last Grand Adventure. Y'all know how I feel about a multi-generational story, okay? It's the summer of love, 1967, and 12 year old B's world has just been shaken up. Her mother is off in San Francisco and her father has remarried um, adding a stepmom and a younger stepsister to the mix so when her grandmother Pidge moves to a new retirement community B agrees to visit but it turns out Pidge isn't interested in settling in what she really wants is to hop a train to Kansas where she believes she'll be reunited with her long missing sister the legendary Amelia Earhart and she wants B to be her sidekick on this secret trip. But getting halfway across the country by plane, train, and automobile proves far more of an adventure than either had bargained for. Oh so yeah, this is about family, connecting, finding truths, all of the stuff that I love. The next one I have is by Kayla. I think it's Kayla Carter, Forever or a Long, Long Time. My oldest read this one and really, really enjoyed it. This is about a brother and a sister, Flora and Julian, who've always been together. Um, Julian is good with words. Flora is strong at math. Sometimes Flora has trouble with her speaking, but no matter how many foster homes she and her brother live in, numbers always make sense. For a long time, it has just been the two of them, and Flora knows that she and Julian are one team always. And now that they have found a forever home, Flora is trying her best to trust and love two more people, her new dad and her new mom, who she calls Person. But when Person tells Flora there will soon be a new baby in the house, Flora is worried. Person's love divided three ways means less love, maybe not enough love. Um, this is a beautiful and poignant story about finding a place to belong and learning what it means to be a family. To understand that love is never divided, only multiplied. I feel like, I mean, y'all know how I feel about reading the whole synopsis. I only like a third. <laughs> just give me, just give me the short of it. Pull me in, like reel me all the way in. Um, so love is never divided, only multiplied. The next set I have is... <laughs> three books in a series that let me just tell you when you get into this reading life you will make some mistakes okay <laughs> and those mistakes sometimes turn out not to be mistakes at all but rather just another way that you learned how to learn if that makes any sense so this series of books the endling I have um let's see what's the first book uh endling the last endling the first and in Ling, the only. These are by Catherine Applegate. She is the author of The One and Only Ivan. And based on what we read from The One and Only Ivan and The One and Only Bob, let me tell you something, these books are not like that, okay? <laughs> so I grabbed these per my younger son's request and he jumped right into them and really enjoyed them. But they ended up being quite like violent, a little bit much. It was definitely not something that uh, was too much for him. It turns out that it was perfectly fine for something that we're used to being able to work our way through, and through in one way or the other, but I just wasn't expecting it, friends. <laughs> and I don't know how I missed it. I really, really don't. Because if I had done enough research, I probably wouldn't have made that mistake. But anyway, this is a story. Let me go back to the first. This is an epic fantasy and adventure uh, for young big fears she may be the last of her kind. So Bix was used to being last, the last in her pack and family, the youngest and the smallest, the last anyone believed would survive in their dangerous kingdom. <sighs> I should have known. <laughs> um, Bix was not afraid to be the first to die. She just did not want to be the last 
to live, the endling. Now Bix is the last chance to save her kind and the last hope for every creature in her world. I must say, friends, this is what happens to us sometimes um, when we're moving along, trying to find resources, trying to find books. Sometimes things just kind of go over your head. I knew this was going to be like an epic adventure type of deal. I just didn't know it was going to be quite so like graphic, okay? So anyway, you live and you learn. Uh, but we have these three, the endling books, and he happened to enjoy them and we just move right along friend um next up i have an adult fiction this is a retelling of pride and prejudice it's called pride brooklyn pride family pride and pride in her afro latino roots zuri has pride but pride might not be enough to save her rapidly gentrifying neighborhood from becoming unrecognizable that's all i need to know i wanted to have um a few to add to this collection of retellings and then be able to read that first Pride and Prejudice story to just kind of see how they compare and contrast and how a writer goes about retelling a story. So I'm excited to add this to collection and to my collection and eventually I will get around to reading it. Next up I have another three book series going on here. Um, the first one, let me get it right. The first one is The Last Last Day of Summer by Lamar Giles. This is a legendary Austin boy adventure. This is another adventurous story. Otto and Sheed Austin are the local sleuths in their zany Virginia town, masters of unraveling mischief using their unmatched powers of deduction. As summer winds down and the first day of school looms, the boys are craving just a little more time for fun, even as they bicker over what kind of fun they want to have. That is, until a mysterious man named Mr. Flux appears with a camera that literally freezes time. Um, I really enjoyed, well, I didn't read these, but... Um, Kendall did read these and I really enjoyed how quirky and like fantastical and the stories were. So that was the first book. Then we have The Last Mirror on the left. And then we also have The Last Chance for Logan County. The next stack of books I want to show you, I guess are resource books. I really hadn't been including too many resource books, but um, I'm going to include these because why not, friends? This is the type of books I, I think I might do a separate video on them, how we have used them, my approach to using them, what we think about them. But this is the Complete Middle School Study Guide series. I have one, two, three, four, five, six books in uh, this series. I have math. English language arts, computer science and coding, science, American history, world history. I do feel like it would have been nice to have like a guide, um, just kind of a walkthrough of how other people have used these, how long it would take them to use them, what to expect when you're using them. I feel like that would have been helpful. So if you want to see a video like that, um, let me know. It's not something I want to do all the time, but it's definitely something I feel like I could have really benefited from and used as a guide when I approached any resources in our homeschool library. But I really enjoy these books and the kids do too. And I'd love to tell you why. <laughs> so these are the ones that I have. I think there's a few more that I do not have um, that are a part of this collection, but these are the ones that we, whoop, these are the ones, these are the ones that we do have. So this is the last fiction book that I have, and then I have a stack of nonfiction to go through. This is The Boy in the Striped Pajamas. I waited a long time for this one. I have wanted this edition for a very long time. I really love this story. Of course, it's super sad, but um, this is by John Boyne, and the illustrations on this edition are by Oliver Jeffers, which you guys know is one of our favorite, or one of my favorite illustrators. Um, it's just a beautifully illustrated edition. Uh, this is Berlin, 1942, when Bruno returns from school one day, he discovers that his father has received a promotion and the family must move to a new house far, far away. There is no one to play with in this desolate place and nothing to do, just a tall fence that stretches as far as the eye can see, cutting Bruno off from the strange people in the distance. Exploring his new environment, he meets a boy whose life and circumstances are very different from his own, and their meeting results in a friendship with devastating consequences. So I've heard um, uh, recaps or reviews of this story that just said that some of the things, things didn't match up, they weren't this or they weren't that, but I really love this story and I can talk all about why um, later on down the line. So. I'm excited to have this one here. There are hundreds of children here, said Bruno, without really thinking about his words before saying them. Only they're on the other side of the fence. Next up, I just have 
Let's run quickly through this stack of nonfiction that I have. I have two more that I added to our who was, what was uh, book list. We have what was Pearl Harbor and what was the Holocaust. I love these little books because they're just short and sweet, a nice little synopsis, summary, and timeline to help them jump into um, more studies on the subject or the topic. Next up, I have two books, poetry books by Nikki Grimes I wanted to add to our collection. I have Legacy, Women Poets of the Harlem Renaissance. Then I have One Last Word, Wisdom from the Harlem Renaissance. The Harlem Renaissance was one of my favorite time periods to study in school when I was younger. The next one I have is Chasing Slow, Courage to Journey Off the Beaten Path. I've read half of this book and I really enjoyed it, but it was so slow that I didn't finish it and I want to remedy that. I would like to uh, finish this book. It is a beautiful, beautiful book. You're here, but you want to be there. So you spend your life narrowing this divide and you call this your race, your journey, your path. You live your days tightening your bootstraps, wiping the sweat from your brow, chasing undiscovered happiness just around the bend. Higher, faster, better, stronger, and on and on you run. Next up, um, this is one I picked up for Cameron. This is Kobe Life Lessons from a Legend. He already finished this one and really enjoyed it. Um, it just has a lot of doggy ear pages, which I love, and things that he's mentioned, made mention of here and there, um, that were just really great lessons for him to be able to um, walk his way through while reading through this book. I love this quote on the back. It says, you have to work hard in the dark to shine in the light. Okay, next up, this one I had been eyeing for a while and finally found it for such a good price. So it was like I had to add this to my library. Um, we Are Each Other's Harvest. I listened to it on audiobook and it's celebrating African American farmers, land, and legacy by Natalie Basile. Um, she's the author of Queen Sugar. And I just really enjoyed this book. Actually, I didn't completely finish it. I'm like almost, almost done. But I've really enjoyed this book because it's something I wanted to dive deeper into in our nutrition studies and our health studies. It kind of led me along this path. I was listening to lots of stories from my father about land that his father owned and how they farmed on that land. And you know, if you look back in any African American's history, great grandfather, grandfather somebody had a farm somebody was tending to it and doing all the things and somewhere down the line we have no farm those farms no more so just going back through and really you know uh understanding what that legacy is i was excited to add this to uh, my library in the early decades following enslavement there were nearly one million black farmers today there are just forty-five thousand, having lost 14 million acres of land. Black farming informs crucial aspects of American culture, strengthening the family, binding our national identity to the land, and healing our communities with food, empowerment, and self-determination. However, this legacy has been at risk for decades, and black farmers continue to contend with discrimination from the United States Department of Agriculture and land loss due to the informal passing of land from generation to generation. And then the last one I have is food is the solution. I've shown you this before, it's what to eat to save the world. Um, we've really been enjoying reading through cookbooks instead of just grabbing the recipes and moving along. And this one has been a good one to read through. It's just taken us some time. Um, but I'm glad to have this on our shelves by Matthew Prescott. I think I have to speed this up before my camera dies. <laughs> anyway, thank you guys so much for watching this video. Let us know if you have any of these on your shelves, if any of these are on um, your list of things to watch out for, all of those things in the comment section below. Remember that life is so very full of lessons and our goal, as always, is to live and to learn. Bye. Don't forget to subscribe!